all of this is in the context, of course, of this debate over what's being taught in schools and the whole question of sexual grooming and, and identity. And I think there it's, it's, you know, and the don't say gay bill and all these sorts of things. And, and behind this perhaps is a fear of uh, that this is a radical change and that, that, you know, the whole family structure of the country is being transformed. Now, I'm kind of skeptical, as I've argued, uh, but I do think there are sort of significant political implications of this data and these trends uh, and where political energy is going. Uh, now, I think on the schooling front, one of the things that does emerge from the FIRE data where they do ask college students where they went to school and they've got four categories, private, public, parochial, which would be, for example, a Catholic religious schools and homeschool. Um, and you don't see any real significant difference in the proportion LGBT in those four categories. Now, what I'm taking from that is that the schooling per se is not likely behind this trend. And whereas, for example, social media use is correlated with being, you know, the higher social media use is correlated with a greater likelihood of identifying as LGBT. And I think there is perhaps better evidence for social media influence uh, in, on this phenomenon than influence through schooling. But of course, it's not definitive, but it is a data point that would suggest maybe even now, now, however, you can still believe that schools aren't really inducing this in children, but at the same time think it's legitimate to have a conversation about at what point you introduce sexual education into schools and how do you represent what's the typical family formation, family structure and uh, sexual relationship in a country and what is perhaps a minority form of it. Uh, I think that's legitimate political discussion. But I don't know that the implications around, say, grooming and around uh, inducing of these uh, these identities is, is I don't know if that case is particularly strong. Yeah. So looking at I mean, looking at your data for for that from the fire data, I mean, the public and private is interesting. So I mean, the, the samples are decent for public. You have eight thousand people who went to public high schools and uh, 2000 for private, but the parochial, which is, you know, the, the, you know, private can include a, you know, very, very liberal thing. So it could be more liberal than the public schools, but parochial, the sample is, you know, 106, the homeschool sample is 131 and there's no difference. Yeah. But I mean, those are small, small samples and there's people selecting it to colleges. So yeah, we don't, we don't know. I mean, I have a hard time believing homeschooling your children, you know, will not <laughs> have an influence on, you know, not have, not putting them in school at all, have <laughs> some kind of influence. Um, that's true, well, but yeah. I guess the the question must be: Well, the fire sample is picking up a certain small number of homeschooled and and parochial kids. Uh, now, are they a special sort of draw from their home from the homeschool population? Well, and they have probably, to answer the serve in the survey too. The survey problems too. So it's like they're they're drawn and then like they're selected into the college, and then plus they're also answering survey while well, everyone doesn't answer surveys. Right? That's true. That's true. But then I guess that's also true of the public and private. Um, so we don't know 100%, but it, it, it is just interesting that, you know, roughly a quarter of homeschool and parochial would, would also be LGBT. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, there's further research. I mean, other sort of data sets I've seen also would suggest a lot of the influence around also the Great Awakening is, is much more driven out of social media than schooling per se. Uh, you know, people will have heard about terms like white privilege first from social media, but it might be reinforced in schools, right? It might be that schools reinforce, or at least they don't counteract. Yeah. Yeah, um, Matt Iglesias, you know, made this point in the debate over critical race theory. It's like, we don't actually know, like, what school, we don't have any data that surveys all the public schools and says, you know, they're all teaching whites are racist, or they're all teaching critical race theory. We, we have no idea. And the same thing with the LGBT, with libs of TikTok, I mean, they have stuff all day um, <laughs> of, you know, these these crazy teachers who are, you know, just talking about brainwashing the kids and how much fun it is. Um, but we have, you know, we have no idea how representative that is. You know, I don't know if, you know, it's like, I don't know. I think no, if you drop into a red... Yeah, yeah. I would say that um, I'm conducting uh, ex exactly such a survey in Britain right now. Or I, I've seen the results. And yeah, I mean, the numbers are probably greater than you believe they are. As far I'll, as I'll just know, leave it at question? that, that, uh -huh. that it, this is not just a few schools. Um, but 
anyway, that that's okay, yeah. For, so it needs to be done in the U.S., but I, it is it is it is probably a larger share than you would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, no, I imagine. I don't know what I would imagine. I haven't thought of you know, I haven't thought about it that carefully. Um, but yeah, I uh, yeah, I mean, there's like a you know, I just sometimes I, mean, I don't know. I, I watch. I look at schools from the outside. So I drive by a school. I look at sometimes they have posters, and you know, one that's by me has like "We are all dreamers." It's got some you know a thing about maybe the child's an illegal immigrant or something, and they've got something. They had a Kamala Harris thing. They didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, the school I was looking at didn't have like an LGBT flag. I don't see that. I see that if you go to the UCLA campus, you'll see LGBT <laughs> flags, you know, everywhere. Um, but yeah, we just, we just don't know. So like to have, know whether the schools have an influence, you have to know what the schools are teaching and then you have to assume, you know, they're, yeah. in, they're influencing I mean, uh, I, people. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, my presumption, I mean, from what I've seen is that their influence is not particularly great. Uh, that it's the wider culture through social media that's that's essentially having the influence, but but you know it's not zero. I don't know. I mean, it's I think it's something, but it's not zero. Uh, well, I, be- I believe it. I mean, I think back when I was a kid, was I influenced more by TV and you know uh, uh, CDs, which we had back there, music and you know pop culture, TV show than than schools. Yeah, un- unquestionably, the schools were not as big of an influence as the wider culture. So I I, yeah. I believe that. Um, yeah, but I think it's like the uh, yeah, evidence of universities. I mean, I again, the, you know, I don't think they shape people's. It, it, we've got studies of universities and politics, for example, and they have a small they have a small effect, but it's 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 a small effect, and it's pretty. I've just seen a survey now where where we ask people about you know, people who uh, are going to go to university, but they're presently just working, taking a year out before they go, and they've kind of got the same looking attitudes as people who are already at university. I mean, so, so I just think it's kind of, I'm just not sure how much these educational institutions content wise do, but, but I still think it's legitimate to have debates over what schools are teaching. They shouldn't be sort of propagandizing. And I think it's legitimate to say, Hey, you know, you should be politically neutral. These things are not politically neutral. Uh, Or you should represent, you know, the, the range of lifestyles, the range of identities reasonably, equitably in terms of their, their incidence in the population rather than presenting a vastly skewed picture. I think that's all legitimate, but I guess my view is that perhaps the panic over the idea that this is somehow in, inculcating different yeah. sexualities. Yeah, you don't need, you don't, you know, for your, you know, your standard of what you need to like make demands about what your children are exposed to, they don't have to be high. Like, you know, you know, if someone says, I don't want my children watching pornography, it's like, oh no, show me a peer reviewed study or we're going to show your children. Right. 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 Like my, my right is to say, I'm uncomfortable with this. You know, I think there's a chance it might be bad. I don't want to show it to them. So yeah, I, I have the same view as a schooling. If, you know, they should reflect the views, the community. Well, I'll, there's no neutral principles here. I think that's a sort of a, uh, a liberal myth. Um, yeah, yeah, it's tricky, right? Because you, you, on the one hand, you don't want them to be prevented from discussing, you know, somebody who's got a same two same sex parents. Um, but at the same time, you also don't want them to to suggest that that you know that's the mainstream of society simply because it's just uh, not an accurate representation of the country or the society. So uh, there's kind of like a balance there where you might say, here's the mainstream, you know, here is a mainstream most of the people you portray would be let's say heterosexual and then you'd portray a roughly uh, proportionate number of of uh, you know non-heterosexual i mean i think that would be fine you know i just think uh, so you don't want to go 100 percent one way 100 percent the other but it's very tough to get to that kind of inflection point in a debate where it's kind of a very all or nothing yeah. I mean, I would, I would let, I mean, I would let the schools do what they want. I mean, as far as uh, the, the community do what they want, you know, as far as the school. So, uh, you know, if they want to say, if they, you know, if there's people who have a religious view and, you know, we're not supposed to teach religious doctrine, but if they have the view that homosexuality is wrong, you know, I don't think that they have to show, you know, proportion that, you know, 5% or 2% of the population is gay. I don't think there's any moral <laughs> obligation. 7.1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have Depending on which moral. data you use. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, even that is, you know, controversial. How are you going to get proportion? We, we, we just talked about how hard it is to, to figure that out. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, all right, yeah, this is a big topic. I mean, uh, we're recording this before the report is out, but I'm, you know, I'm sure it's going to get a, a lot of attention and it's going to be very interesting uh, to people. And um, yeah, I think the headlines here are, uh, it's it's the behavior hasn't changed as much as um, identity. It's concentrated on the left. It's related to mental illness. 
um, trends uh, may have peaked and, and uh, uh, you know, the census data, that's a huge one. I mean, it's probably not 25%. So right. that's easy. It's not one in four kids. It's, you know, one in 10 or one in 20 or, or something like that. Right. And any, you know, anything else you would say about the sort of the, this question? Cause it's, it's an important topic, even, even if the, the low end estimates are right, it's still a big change in our culture. Yeah. I mean, I think it, there's also a question in here about the thrust of conservative activism going forward, for example. And, you know, there has been a, sh you know, to what extent are we going to have a conversation about sexuality and LGBT, or to what extent is it going to be more about secular issues around critical race theory, for example? I, my own view is that the those sort of critical race theory questions about history are more important and more consequential and Actually, there is where I'm more supportive, for example, of interventions, um, whereas I think the the LGBT one could be one where, you know, you're chasing something that is really not necessarily that important, particularly long term, because uh, we haven't even talked about these people getting older and, you know, settling down and what's going to happen longer term, right? And, and if you actually look long term like that, it may be that this this fizzles. Uh, to, to some degree. So I'm just not sure that it, it warrants the energy because any energy you're directing towards one thing is, is energy you're not really able to direct elsewhere. And I just kind of worry that this could be a, a, you know, somewhat of a wasted effort. Um, and, and that whereas, whereas I, I think the bigger issues are around, uh, you know, traducing national history and heritage and, you know, in the schools and that that's probably where you want to focus more of your efforts. Um, but, but, but I think it's sort of drifted towards, towards these sorts of questions, which I think is, is perhaps not necessarily the most productive direction. I don't know what you think of that. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would, I would agree. Look, I would rather have a hundred percent chance of my children having to read, uh, Abraham Kendi than a 1% chance they're going to be convinced that they're trans, right? right so right, I, I okay. think, I think your point, but the, um, the potential harm, you know, it might go over the head of 90, 99% of kids and it might not matter. The potential harm here is so great if you want grandchildren or something, um, that I think it's, it's definitely worth worrying about. And that's not even getting into the sort of the second order effects of our culture. So yeah, I think, I think both fights are, you know, I think both fights are worth fighting. And you know what? I don't, I don't know if there's much of a trade off between them because if conservatives get, you know, control of the school board, the same people who don't like critical race theory are the ones who are not going to like LGBT propaganda. So they're, you know, they're probably more synergistic than they are, uh, uh, you know, sort of competing priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I guess it depends on sort of what the target is. If it is sort of the trans thing or if it's, if it's sort of a wider thing about, you know, LGBT, yeah, it, I, I guess one of the I think the trans thing. I think the trans thing is driving yeah. it. I mean, I think if that was good, like the you know the the non-binary, the trans, you know, just somebody being gay. I mean, I think that you know conservatives might not like it. It's not going to motivate you know huge political action. To us. right, right. So, uh, yeah, it is. It is. I think that's focused on on that, and I think it's. I think it's it's a right choice. I think there's an instinct instinct here that's you know good and 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 pointing in the right <laughs> direction. <laughs>